looking at it in the sunlight, oh, the glitter. Oh no, this is, uh, why would somebody do this to the car? It's like they put stripper glitter on it. I feel so bad for you. I'm sorry to whoever did this because, oh my God, but uh, maybe we can bring you home and save you. Fingers crossed, inside. Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And I am at Porsche of Wichita today uh, to look at a car, but also we're going down to Arkansas for Porsche Palooza to pick up a now Targa again 911 SC, but maybe I'll have a Porsche to drive down there. Now, I come by Porsche of Wichita on the walls or Auto Campus quite a bit to look at what they have in the back. Everything out front is too nice for me. I'm kind of a bottom feeder and I like the hoopties and obviously hard luck projects that are way too far gone. I'm an automotive masochist that likes to rescue hoopties. I'm a hopeless romantic, I guess. So when I see something that's probably too far gone to be saved, I want it even, even more. And that's why when I saw this 996 911 Turbo right here sitting in the back with a completely ruined paint job, I thought, oh, my God, I have to have this thing. So I texted the Porsche dealer who took it on trade and they said, well, maybe we'll end up fixing it and repainting it because we need inventory if it's nice. Otherwise, we'll paint it and retail it, which I thought in my head after seeing it for five seconds that that's not happening. And I was right. A few weeks later, they texted me and said, if you want the car, it's yours. $28,500. So under $30,000 for a 996 Turbo, which I thought that would never, ever happen again. But it is cheap for a very, very good reason. And let's take a look at it. This is absolutely unbelievable that one of these could get to this condition. I didn't look at it very closely before, but uh, now uh, the more I look, the worse it gets. I mean, obviously it's been repainted, but this looks like, did they put glitter in the paint? Uh, I imagine it was a black car, surely. Yeah, it was originally a black car, but it was repainted black with some glitter sparkle that is also begun to fade here, which is quite bad. <laughs> a lot of orange peel. Obviously there's some marks here where they're showing things that need to be addressed, but then you get to the front and oh my God, it has a burned fender. It... Somebody was sanding down the hood there? Were they seeing how many layers of paint existed? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the front bumper is all completely chipped up. The 2001s had these weird bumperettes. Man, this thing is an absolute mess. They basically ran out of room on the windshield to write down all the things that need to be fixed. And the windshield, of course, needs to be replaced as well. Uh, but these things are amazing cars. 400 horsepower, all-wheel drive, the first modern Porsche Turbo. And the interior, well, it actually looks pretty darn nice. Not nearly as bad as the outside, actually. Dash looks good. This thing's way nicer than Apollo 911 on the inside, which is interesting. 146,000 miles. I mean, the only wear I see is on the steering wheel up here, carbon fiber, which is nice, but uh, chipping away a bit there. This is the big letdown, though. It is the Tiptronic transmission. This is before Porsche PDK with the lightning quick shifts. I mean, this is a slush box. The six speed is way better in these cars, but this is really cheap. $28,500 is what they want for this thing. Uh, let's see how the Metzger engine starts up. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> I can hear the turbos. It sounds like an exhaust or missing an exhaust. Here, let's look. The active aero spoiler. All faded. Oh, yeah, aftermarket intake, certainly. It looks pretty good, actually. You go underneath. Yeah, it looks like it's completely missing its muffler. A little one there, but there should be some muffler going on here. There's a lot of oil leaks, too. Jiminy. I kind of feel bad for this car. It's like a lot of cars, like the 911 SC. Uh, I feel bad for and go, well, way too deep fixing, but uh, this one, the price is certainly right if it drives well, so let's see. We definitely have a bit of a rattle going on somewhere. Not sure where. <laughs> and that exhaust, <laughs> that is properly annoying already, but kind of goes with the territory here. All right, let's get out into traffic. Really? Good power. Um, wow, okay. It is freezing cold outside, so let's turn on the heater and the heated seats. Uh-huh. Sure wish this thing was a manual, but I don't have to worry about someone before me over revving it because the automatic stops you from doing that. Ugh. 
Dang. Okay. <laughs> Great power for sure. Shifting is a little weird, but that kind of goes with the territory with first generation Tiptronics. They weren't very good, but better than, well, a lot of automatic transmissions of the air. And at least it's not some horrible flappy paddle system that's unreliable. Very solid here. Get on the highway. Wow. Handling, braking good too. On your mark, get set, go. Jeez. That was already almost 80 miles an hour. Wow. All right, we finally have our first warning light here. Look at this. Failure for spoiler control. It has active aero and the aerodynamics, well, it isn't popping up. A very common issue on these things, but if that's the only mechanical problem this thing has, other than oil leaks, it's a miracle. It really is. <laughs> Let's try windows because the regulators can be very expensive. All right, those are working. Sunroof, that is working as well. Very, very good. Heater is blowing heat. Heated seats do not work, unfortunately. That's a shame. I wonder if the seats were swapped because it certainly doesn't match the outside. This thing looks like it was baked. Now, I know Porsche of Wichita did an inspection on this car, a mechanical inspection, so I'm gonna go look that over and also look at the car facts and then see if we can make a deal on this thing, but uh, I'm feeling pretty good about it. It actually made it back in one piece. And these cars are so solid, but now looking at it in the sunlight, oh, the glitter. Oh no, this is, uh, why would somebody do this to the car? It's like they put stripper glitter on it. I feel so bad for you. I'm sorry to whoever did this because, oh my God, but uh, maybe we can bring you home and save you. Fingers crossed, inside. Well, you all knew what was going to happen there. Of course we were able to make a deal and now this Porsche is home, the latest addition to the garage. So special thanks to Walzer Porsche of Wichita for enabling this crackhead as latest fix with this German wonderful machine here. But what really sealed the deal for me was when I saw the Carfax report, which there are no accidents on this Carfax, but it explains why this Porsche is in this amazingly awful condition. And it's basically the car version of The Hangover, the movie where three guys go to Vegas for a bachelor party and everything goes wrong. One of them ends up marrying a stripper. Well, that's exactly what happened to this car. So early on, it had a very blessed life in California, Santa Monica. Only 9,000 miles put on it in its first four years of life. But then in 2006, it went to Vegas and it went to Vegas hard, used obviously as a rental. It went from 9,000 miles to 133,000 miles in a very short period of time. And then, well, it was sold and somehow made its way to Wichita. So what happened is this car was a rental. It sat outside. People needed to see it outside, obviously, to walk by and think, oh, I'll rent this. That'll be fun. And that's why it's an automatic as well. You wouldn't want to rent off a manual transmission car. So that made it much more appealing. Anybody could drive this thing. But the Las Vegas sun beat down on it and it faded so they ended up repainting it with all the glitter in it to make it even more attractive I guess for people to rent and then that has faded as well and now you have well the stripper glittered 911 turbo <laughs> oh. they also showed me their quick mechanical inspection on it which is why they are punting it it has oil leaks and other issues all the stuff that I saw in my inspection and on the test drive so obviously they weren't going to keep it. It's more reconditioning than they want to put into it, but it's perfect for a complete idiot like me. So we'll see what the car wizard thinks about this thing in a later video, but actually I need to get to Arkansas to Porsche Palooza. And no, I'm not gonna drive this. It needs a little too much work probably for that because I'm taking the family with me. We're going to get in the Shelby GT500 of 2021, only one year old, and go out and check on a Porsche project that is actually wrapping up with Leonard of the 911 Den. He's the organizer of Porsche Palooza, but he got this car finished in time for me to drive it. So let's hit the road. Yeah, I know this is a Porsche video, but this GT500 really can't do anything. It's perfect for these twisty roads getting into Arkansas, but it's also a really comfortable touring car, which is why I'm not driving it very hard right now, because, yeah, typical. But anyway, I'm excited to see the Porsche. 
Yep, we've opened the book on a new page of Stupid Projects and we're closing the book on another one right here with the 1979 Porsche 911 SC, which was a cabriolet when I bought it. Really, it was a parts car when I bought it. My plan was the car hadn't been running for 20 years and I thought it would be very fun to do an EV conversion with the car wizard with this car and it showed up and well, it was quite a mess, but I still wanted to do the battery conversion, so I reached out to companies who do this. It's very easy and straightforward. They're doing it with Volkswagens and Porsches, you know, a drive motor dropping it in, a battery in the front. And they said, well, sure, we'll put you on the list and you can have it in two to three years. And so that obviously wasn't going to work. So the wizard tried to start the motor and believe it or not, this thing started, but it smoked everywhere, but it idled really well. The clutch worked. It moved under its own power. And that's despite the fact that it had been sitting for over 20 years, but clearly it needed a lot of help. And unfortunately, this car starting sent me down a path, uh, a path I really shouldn't have gone down. But now the result is pretty darn awesome. This car started life as a gold Targa, and then somebody chopped off the roof and made it into a convertible. A very common thing to do in the 80s because you couldn't get convertibles due to insurance mandates or whatever. But I've decided to put it back, and by I decided to put it back, well, I wrote a lot of checks to Leonard here at the 911 Den in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. This is my third time attending the Porsche Palooza, but my first time actually with a Porsche. Of course, I came down the GT500. It's been wonderful, but I now have a car to drive here in the legendary pig trail in the beautiful roads of northwestern Arkansas. But before I do that, let's go on a tour with this thing with Leonard to show everything he's done because it's not just putting a target roof back on it he's rebuilt the motor and done some really cool stuff back there yeah GT 500 doing great target doing great Euro Asian Bob is here good morning we got a weak starter good morning oh here we go all right wouldn't go into first ready yeah this thing's got a lot of compression yeah more right, speed ready? we need more speed more well, speed. there's a clip there. Maybe I should help push. Anyway, back to the tour. Oh. Yes, Leonard. It's a lovely blouse there. Thank you. I need yes, to do a little bit a... more push-ups yeah, here. Thank um, you. But uh, anyway, My favorite shirt. <laughs> sure. But uh, how stupid was I to take on this project? This was a big project, and yeah. you told me it was. But I like where we ended up with it. So the engine came to you for broken head studs and it turned into a little more than that right it did you know we were so far behind from the mechanical aspect in terms of getting it shipped somewhere in a machine shop we did all of it ourselves and it took a while but it was a bear to get out of there if you remember all the videos i sent you were mm -hmm. welding and trying to weld the studs on yeah yeah well last porsche palooza a year ago you had just gotten the heads back. The car was still at the Wizards and we decided to bring it here for you to put it together. And thank goodness we did because, well, the first thing, this car's a little bit shinier than it used to be. So you did something. I did, we did something. We, we polished it with, we gave it a bath with Comet. And the Comet, while you wouldn't use it on one of your really nicely finished cars, it did a great job of sort of knocking the, uh, you know, the oxidation yeah. off. Yeah. Of and giving it that patina look. Although it it's, already had kind of the patina look. Yeah, but the wheels polished out pretty nice. Didn't they? I liked them yeah. a lot. I know Bob didn't care for them, but I thought they came out really nice. Well, don't listen to... I'm oh, sorry. Well, don't listen to Bob. I mean, his cars don't even run, as you saw. So, um, but inside, the sport seats are back together. We still have, like, three different interiors going on in here. So the brown carpets, the door panels with the speaker holes. Somebody wanted the speakers, which is kind of strange. Um, I guess so. Yeah, all the brown is original. I think the dash yeah. was originally brown. Somebody dyed that, but the sport seats are comfortable. I think they fit the car nicely. I mean, if you like it, then, you know, that's really all that matters. I, I think, like it. I think I'd leave it alone. Maybe just put some old speakers in it and bring it to a Bluetooth stereo, but back seats are back in too because everything was sort of unbolted in here right it was in fact when i think when it showed up the transmission was upside down in the driver's seat and all the oil <laughs> had poured out into the into the cabin perfect but well, i guess the biggest change obviously this car started life as a targa somebody chopped the roof off i decided i wanted to target back on it you uh were trying to persuade me not to have to do this but now that it's done i mean come I mean, on yeah i love it i love it if really if we had not 
thanks to Greyhound bus line that lost the inner structure there. Yeah, you had to fight a bum or something? I got in a police report. I got in a fight. And oh. it was ended up in a police report at the bus station. That's a whole nother story. Oh, okay. But we finally found a second substructure under here. It was hacked off. The original top was hacked off. Because this is just the back. pretty part. This is just the pretty part. Under yeah, here is an actual on. bar that you welded yes, back on. Yes, We have pictures of that. It's the actual structure. It welds to the actual chassis itself. Yes. And then my hatch. This is the original hatch. It had a whale tail on it, which now is uh, gone. But we have the holes to remove remember it by so <laughs> and patina oddly it was put on twice oh so they well they put it on and realized it was in the wrong spot and then they moved it again but it was so broken up and crushed it was there i don't think we could save it well if you want another deck lid i've located one if you like this one we leave it as is it's extra cooling i suppose right hey I, that's why i feel yeah, about it but this is the coolest part obviously the engine pretty darn close to being rebuilt there's some bottom end stuff that's original right bottom end stuff is original and you know when we talked about this before the main bearings are hard to get. They're not the quality that they used to be. A lot of times guys are splitting the case, cleaning them up, and putting the old bearings back in. So mm. if there's not a problem, we left it alone, rebuilt the top end. But amazingly, the old Bosch fuel injection did fire in this thing and run briefly. It but did. it was pretty knackered, right? It was. It, it Yeah, it started and it fired a few times, but it was in bad shape and it, we would have a nightmare trying to go through that and sort that out. So this, this is the coolest part, these PMO carburetors. So PMO carburetors. Six carburetors on this thing feeding each cylinder. It looks absolutely awesome. It does. Keep in mind there is absolutely no choke on this unit. You got six carburetors and no choke. It's 30 it was degrees. 19 degrees. Yeah, it's very, very cold. So it's going to take a long time to warm this car up to actually be able to drive it. But mm -hmm. uh, you also get a great view of the original color of this car, which is gold. Which, I mean, I could repaint it and it looked really pretty, but this was the only car at Palooza that had real patina. This car stood out amongst yeah. all the cars. I agree. It's yeah. a hoopty, but it has all the right stuff now. I think so too. I'm taking this car a minute to get warmed up, but I'm starting to feel its greatness. These carburetors, they just sound absolutely awesome sucking the air in. It has a different exhaust on it too, so it sounds really good with heater, so I have working heat as well. But Leonard obviously did all the little things because the suspension's dead on, feels right, the brakes feel good. It's amazing this car sat for over 20 years and runs as good as it did considering, well, how little work was done. It was still a lot of work and a lot of money, but being all in on this thing for about 30 grand is about half of what a normal Targa goes for that's all fancy, or well, less than half if it's really, really nice and low mileage. So I'm sitting really good in this thing. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go deeper into repainting it, completely restoring it, because it's just so dang cool as is. But uh, let's get out of town here and have a little bit of fun. That sounds pretty darn good. And I do appreciate Leonard putting on new seals because it is fairly quiet for a 70s car as far as wind noise. Oh man, it is just so pretty out here and the roads are just fantastic. I mean, if you live within a day's drive of northwestern Arkansas and haven't been on the Pigs Trail, you are really missing out on this Targa. Well, it's perfect for it because in the GT500, you're going triple the speed limit to feel any kind of thrill at all. But this car, with this lower horsepower and being older, it's just perfect for these roads to go 55 and carve through here and have an absolute blast. And Leonard, man, did he do a great job in this thing. Downshift, into the curve. It's dialed in. I mean, thank goodness for YouTube with me because a project car like this would never make sense in any other world. And I'm sure a lot of you are watching can sympathize. Boy, I've spent way too much money, more than the car's worth fixing it, and it still has a long way to go. But, well, because I'm able to make YouTube videos, you all watch, that makes projects like these possible where a car can come back from the dead. Same with the 996 Turbo. It probably doesn't make any sense to pour a bunch of money into an automatic turbo that looks like that, but we're gonna do it. I mean, that car deserves come back. It didn't deserve the horrible treatment in Las Vegas that it had. It's not nearly as bad as this car, so hopefully it won't be such an undertaking like this to have a happy ending. Thank you for watching. Whee! And be sure to follow Leonard on the 911 Den. He has another one of my Porsches, the turbo-powered 74 Carrera, the Gulf Orange one that he'll be working on. He was posting updates on this like when he welded on the target top, so give him a follow as well. I'll have it linked below. Bye!